Are you traveling to Scotland in 2024 and are you curious about all the new things that Scotland will have to offer this year? Then continue watching because I'm going to be covering all the new places that are coming to Edinburgh and beyond, all of the cool historical anniversaries, even places that have sadly closed down, also some info on what weather to expect. So yeah, why don't we all sit down and talk about that for a bit? My name is Kat aka Kakibot, I make videos about Edinburgh and Scotland and sometimes even even beyond. And today I am bringing you what I just promised, a little update on Scotland in 2024. Now I thought I would start by sharing three of my ins and three of my outs for traveling to Scotland in 2024. First, my ins. Number one, definitely taking full advantage of public transport. I know this sounds like a very generic tip, but here in Edinburgh, the tram system especially, which, you know, when I say system, I mean just one line. The tram line especially has kind of finished its first, second, phase last summer, I believe. And since then, the difference in which areas of Edinburgh you can explore has absolutely changed. Uh, especially for me, I do live on the tram line. So for me, having the opportunity to travel to Leith especially uh, has been a real game changer. My second in is buying souvenirs from independent creators and shops. Now, this might sound obvious, but sometimes in Edinburgh especially, it's very hard to tell. Um, we are being very overpowered by, well, let's just say shops that tend to be owned by the same people, they tend to sell the same stuff. But if you know where to look, Edinburgh has so many great little indie shops, um, not just the obvious Scottish design exchange on George Street, even though I think that one is the best and also you can buy my stuff there, but there's many others. For example, on Victoria Street, just next to the just unbelievably overcrowded and I think overhyped Harry Potter shop, you will find the Red Door Gallery. Uh, I am not selling there, so I genuinely just really like that shop. You will find many gifts there for anyone in your life. Um, so I think that is a big in for 2024. And another in, which is less of a tip for you, but just kind of an observation where local tourism is moving, is that things are moving more and more online. I think that last Fringe Festival has been extremely online-centric when it comes to dealing with tickets and such. And you will find this trend affecting a lot of other attractions as well. Also, payments are now overwhelmingly just based on, you know, contactless, card payments and even with your phone, uh, which is something that you now can do on buses. Unfortunately, not quite in the trams. On the tram, you still have to buy your tickets outside of the tram, but you can still do it contactless. Now my three outs for traveling to Scotland and I guess living in Scotland in 2024. First one being not using it and hence losing it, which we are seeing all the time. And again, you're gonna see that in this video later on, we have lost so many great local small indie businesses and it's so sad. And honestly, sometimes it is not the people's fault. Like these tend to be businesses that are super full, super busy, and you would look at them and think, wow, that is a successful business. And it's sometimes hard to tell, especially nowadays when all the energy costs are so high and the rent is going up. It's hard, but I still think if you have a favorite place, try to keep this in mind. I myself am very guilty of this, that like I have a favorite place and I go there maybe like twice a year because I just, you know, sometimes I just don't make it a priority. And um, yeah, I think it, it would be good to be more mindful of this because um, in Edinburgh, the proverbial small business meat grinder is very relentless. We are losing small indie shops and coffee shops and restaurants left and right. So in 2024, just be on it. If you have a favorite, please go there, throw your money at them. My next out is focusing on tourist hotspots only. Now you can apply this to the whole of Scotland. You can apply this to just Edinburgh. Obviously in Edinburgh, especially during the sort of high times of uh, tourist season. So especially summer and Christmas, you will see that some of the areas are almost impossible to get through. It can be quite upsetting if you don't like crowds. And I'm not saying this should be a trend or not a trend just because of my own comfort. I am saying it also because 
once again, there are many wonderful businesses in the other areas of both Edinburgh and Scotland that you might not prioritize. This channel has many guides to Edinburgh's less known neighborhoods and also videos about other cities. For example, at this point, you can find many videos about Glasgow or Dundee and there will be more coming in 2024. Yay! Uh, which takes me to my last out, which is forgetting Glasgow exists. I think that it's easy to say like, okay, with like Stirling or St Andrews or even Dundee, that can be a day trip. But Glasgow is like a full blown, amazing city. When I first moved here 12 years ago, Glasgow was a lot cooler than Edinburgh. Glasgow has so many great little nooks and crannies, such wonderful museums, you wouldn't believe it. Um, so many great coffee shops and bakeries and eateries. I think that the community spirit there is much stronger than it is in Edinburgh. So perhaps if you're visiting Edinburgh and it's not your first time, try to prioritize going to Glasgow as well. The connection between the two is extremely easy. Like it literally takes 40 minutes to get from Edinburgh to Glasgow. And myself, even myself, I I judge myself that I don't go there more often. So yeah, in 2024, put that on your list, your bucket list. If you don't go to Glasgow, I am judging you. Now, a couple of anniversaries. What a nice thing to mention. In 2024, it's going to be 750 years since the birth of Robert de Bruce, uh, a great fighter for Scottish independence. And you can probably imagine this means that this year we should be expecting a lot of events, exhibitions and people's celebrations uh, on the this theme, I think especially in Stirling. Stirling is going to be a busy one this year because they are also celebrating their own little anniversary, which is the 900 years since being named uh, a royal borough. I hope I pronounced that right. It's kind of weird because like when you go like Edinburgh, it's you're used to it. But then when it's like a royal borough, then you're kind of like not sure if you if you should go in like borough or burg or just like the same as in Edinburgh. Well, anyway, you can tell me down below if uh, I just totally mangled it. And we also have a little baby anniversary, which is the Kelpies in Falkirk. They have been first introduced to the skyline of that area in 2014. So they are going to be celebrating their 10 year birthday. Yay! Now, okay, so as you can imagine, Scotland being just its own country has a lot of events going on and I should probably mention some of them because if you're watching this and, um, you know, maybe you are still in the initial uh, part of planning your trip, maybe there are some events that you don't know about or maybe you're just not sure when exactly they're happening. I, however, cannot be covering all of them. I think that would just like take over this whole video. So I just made a little list of, um, I'm not gonna say my favorites, but just kind of like things that felt logical to prioritize. However, I'm also gonna leave a link in the doobly-doo with kind of a more detailed list of events that are on in Scotland in 2024. Um, however, for this, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna get my computer because otherwise I would never remember. So if you're watching this and uh, you're somehow planning like a very last minute trip, uh, <laughs> you probably know by now that it's gonna be the Burns Night soon on the 25th of January. So for that, I think that if you're watching this literally really kind of around the weekend that this video is coming out, I think this might be the perfect time to look into booking a Burns Night dinner with, you know, some sort of nice like poetry being recited and all of that. Um, there are many nice restaurants around town that do throw like a official celebration. I think I checked about five days ago and um, I haven't seen any tickets quite on yet, but surely it must be it must be starting to happen very soon. Around the last two weeks in January, we have a great Celtic celebration, which is the Celtic Connections over in Glasgow. So um, that kind of goes from the end of January into start of February. If you're into that part of Scottish culture, don't miss out. Later in spring, on the 10th and 11th of May, we have the Music and Culture Festival, the Hidden Door Festival. Uh, they are celebrating their 10 year anniversary now. So they are promising this to be very special. Later in June, between 20th and 23rd, we have the Royal Highland Show. I've never been, but maybe this year will be my first. Maybe I'm going to apply for like a little press pass to see the coos and donkeys and chickens. I know the queen used to really like the cows. Not to make things political, uh, the Royal Highland show feels a bit Tory to me, but um, also it has animals. So um, 
I'm torn. If you're interested in observing the Highland Games, you know, where the, the big strong men are throwing balls and logs around, then the season for Highland Games really is kind of all throughout um, the whole of summer, including May and September. Uh, again, a cool thing for me to maybe finally go see for the first time ever this year. So if you'd like me to make a video about that, let me know in the comment section. And of course, in the summer, we have the festival season, which kind of, I would say, starts kind of June-ish and goes all, all the way into August. Most importantly, we have the Fringe, which this year is happening between August 2nd and 26th, which to me feels like slightly earlier than usual. If you can't make it to Fringe, don't forget that usually the week before Fringe officially starts, you also get like the sort of like the little street food festival in um, the same area. Is it George Square? I think so. Yeah, and that tends to be basically the same street food as you then later get during Fringe in that part of Fringe. So um, yeah, you're not gonna miss out completely. You also have the Edinburgh International Festival for the more like serious culture. Um, you also have the book festival, even earlier than that, um, just so I'm not completely Edinburgh centric all the time. Uh, between June 7th and 23rd, you have the Glasgow International Festival, uh, which is also very culture centric and uh, takes takes place all over the city in multiple venues. So kind of similarly to the Edinburgh one, but uh, probably less busy. So maybe a fun alternative to go with my previous pro tip about not forgetting about Glasgow, don't do it. I was also curious about what musical acts are coming over in uh, 2024. Uh, I guess most importantly for many people, not necessarily me, but like no shade, Taylor Swift. I think that if you don't have tickets for Taylor Swift by now, you're probably not gonna get them. So, you know, just, this is just a little like PSA that this is happening. I think similarly, last year we had Harry Styles in town and it was, pretty wild. Like, I don't think I've ever experienced the city just like dress up in so many feather boas and pink hats. And it was in a way kind of fun, although they have left quite a lot of litter behind. So if you're a Swifty, please clean up after yourself. Thank you. We will also have Doja Cat, uh, the 1975, and also apparently Nickelback. And the Royal National Scottish Orchestra, just like last year, they are doing the uh, video game symphony. It, I think that's kind of vaguely what they call it. Um, at Usher Hall, I think that on May 31st, it's at Usher Hall, and then on June 1st, it's in Glasgow. So you again have these two dates, two options. Um, it was so good. It was like the best event I've attended last year. Um, the conductor was also a composer of multiple game scores, including like World of Warcraft. And you can tell how she's, she's just so excited to share them with you. Of course, Scotland also has many, many like pop cultural conventions, you know, cons. Uh, we have the Edinburgh one, there's also a big one in Glasgow, and also I believe that this year will be the first year that the board game convention will be moving down to Edinburgh. Outside of Fringe there will be the, the usual sort of series of touring companies bringing in musicals and um, some less musical theater plays into Edinburgh. Um, I think that we also have Hamilton coming into town. I think that similarly to Taylor Swift, if you don't have your tickets for Hamilton, uh, you will just not go see Hamilton. I'm sorry, not in Edinburgh. <laughs> Maybe like next year in a different city. I've also looked into some exhibitions that are coming to the museums and galleries around Scotland. Uh, specifically in Edinburgh, we are getting the return of the Game On exhibition. So not to give this video a bit of a theme, but you know, I do like video games and this one is great for actually uh, having the opportunity to play some of the old vintage games, um, you know, in how they were first built. It's really fun, but it's also like very informative. It's one of those shows that you can enjoy on your own, but also, you know, to bring your kids to. I think, um, I believe they are also planning an exhibition of, this is a bit of a vibe change, but they are also planning an exhibition on Scotland and the Cold War. Um, also up north in Dundee, the Dundee V&A. Um, I'm very excited to see that they have 
two exhibitions that I'm definitely going to see, both starting, I believe, around May. Um, the first one is about like city photography and the other one is about kimono. So if you don't know, the V&A in Dundee has been designed by Kengo Kuma, who is quite a famous Japanese architect. And I'm kind of thinking maybe there's a connection between these two exhibitions and him or just the sort of like friendship that has sprung over this collaboration of uh, Japan and Japanese artists uh, and Scotland and Dundee VNA. Now to be fully British, uh, I will talk about weather for a bit. Okay, so um, obviously predictions of weather are hardly even, you know, uh, you can't even trust them when you look at the weather forecast for like, you know, two days down, uh, let alone the whole year. But, you know, there are general kind of trends and expectations that might very well fulfill themselves. So let's talk about those. Uh, first one being the El Nino is apparently bringing kind of a less predictability into European sort of winter time. But, you know, I would say that uh, Scotland is already not predictable. So that doesn't really change anything for anyone. If you're coming uh, to Edinburgh in winter and spring, you should really be expecting everything, every kind of weather. Another thing I've read is that apparently the meteor men are saying that this will be a record-breaking summer once again, similarly to, I would say, the last two summers. Um, honestly, I can't fight them on that because being here for 10 plus years, I have definitely seen the Scottish summers getting more and more warm and not you know not necessarily in a bad way like i know that overall it means the planet is on fire but um in scotland unlike in england uh sometimes having like a like a spell of hot weather um we tend to our hot summers tend to be around like 30 degrees max while down in england it can go to like 36 or even 40 you know especially in the big cities so i would not want to be there but um sometimes when you go on like a little day trip especially if you leave the cities the hot weather can actually be kind of nice i probably shouldn't be saying that but yeah i think I think that personally I don't have a problem trusting the Meteor Boys on that. And the last thing is, um, so you probably noticed that 2023 was very rich on Aurora Borealis. You could see it from Portobello Beach or even like down Dal Rai. Like I had neighbors seeing it from their windows. People are just seeing northern lights left and right. I have not seen them. Therefore, the information that there are supposed to be even more of these like solar storms bringing Aurora to Scotland and just kind of a lot of Europe uh, is good news to me, even though there's like a part of me that's obsessed with like post-apocalyptic movies that thinks like, hmm, like solar flare sounds a lot less appealing than um, Aurora Borealis seen from Arthur's seat. Like, I feel like you can't have one without the other, at least from what I understand. So I'm like a little bit worried, but I'm hoping that at the very least, even if like all of our internet gets uh, erased by a solar flare, at least I'm gonna get to see one of nature's visual miracles. Okay, now let's talk about some of the places that are opening in 2024 all across Scotland. And when I say all across Scotland, I have a couple of places in Scotland and then it's mostly Edinburgh. I'm sorry, I am a bit Edinburgh centric because this is where I live and um, I kind of have like the best stream of information from Edinburgh. But I'm also, I'm also guessing that despite me telling you, you're probably still gonna spend the most time in Edinburgh. So hopefully you don't mind too much. Okay, so around Scotland, we have the Perth Museum, which is reopening this year. Um, it looks beautiful. It looks like a, a really beautiful building with um, some unique artifacts in it. I'm really looking forward to it opening. I think that's gonna be the point when I go over and make like a, a video about spending 24 hours in Perth. It's Perth is definitely one of those cities in Scotland that I think a lot of people just don't, don't think about much, don't consider visiting. And I can't judge if that's fair or not because I think I've been there once maybe like to stop in like a Tesco's and that was it. But now they're gonna have a cool new museum and I'm really looking forward to visiting. Similarly to that, uh, we have the Scottish Cranog Centre, which uh, a Cranog is apparently like this house built 
on water, which was one of like the traditional sort of abodes in um, ancient Scotland. And um, I'm really curious to see that. This museum has already been opened previously, but then it burned down. So basically they have been rebuilding it and it's supposed to reopen in 2024. Uh, I think that sounds really unique, really fun. So, you know, look it up. Kind of close to Edinburgh, but not within it, is gonna be the Lost Shore Surfing Resort Adventure Center. Um, this is supposed to be, I believe, like one of the largest places of, of such type, definitely in Europe, if not like in, in the West. I am not a surfer, but it's definitely like an interesting thing to bring people in for. Also, I think somewhere around Ocean Terminal, we are supposed to get a place called uh, Edinburgh Level X. I think this is going to be like a like a family adventure fun time center. Um, clearly uh, in effort to get more people down into Leith again now that the trams are running. Other places opening up in Edinburgh. So something that I noticed very recently, the Elephant House, which has been claiming to be the birthplace of, you know, Boy Wizard, um, is coming back, not in the same location as it was before, which was kind of close to the Frankenstein pub, but um, now they moved to Victoria Street, which, you know, again, some people see that as a very Boy Wizard-esque area, because it kind of looks like a Diagon Alley. Um, yeah, so it's gonna be there, very close to that souvenir shop that I mentioned earlier. But hey, at least it is still a local business. Um, I'm rooting for them. They had to close because of a huge fire, which probably sucked a lot. So I'm looking forward to them reopening and, you know, having a new coffee shop. Fun. Also on Victoria Street, but also on Castle Street, there's gonna be two new branches of a place called Noops or Nobs. Uh, it is a place that I noticed down in London. It's like a hot chocolate cafe. And um, I know that it's a chain. It's not like a small indie local place, but personally, I'm quite excited for them coming because I am a, a bit of a chocolate nerd. I, like, I do like my little sort of like single origin sort of taste comparison opportunity. Um, so I'm really looking forward to them opening. I think that's gonna be a nice, alternative to always just having coffee or tea. Also in Newtown, there's gonna be a new Spanish butcher opening. Um, so I'm, I'm curious about that. Again, that sounds like something that a lot of locals will be excited for. Um, we do have some quite exciting butcher shops around town. That, si that seems like the one kind of small shop type that hasn't quite started fully dying off yet, so um, it's nice to see something that's more international. Speaking of Spanish, if you know the little like tapas bar pigs on Royal Mile, they will be opening a new store too. I cannot remember where exactly that's gonna be, but I'm gonna try and pop it down here. A new coffee shop, which is not moving here from, thankfully not from London, but just from St. Andrews. Uh, in St. Andrews, they have this nice little, very Japanese style coffee shop. It's called Konbini Co. If you know, if, you, if you've been to Japan, you know that Konbini is how they call their convenience shops. But um, this coffee shop is not themed like a Japanese convenience shop. It is just kind of like very clean and designy. And they do seem to have nice food available. And I always wanted to go there in St. Andrews and I never managed uh, I guess that you just, you know, if, if you're like a lower or middle class person, you just can't get into these fancy <laughs> coffee shops in St. Andrews over all the posh kids studying history of art. So I'm actually really, really psyched that they are bringing one to Edinburgh, where I imagine that Edinburgh University students are also going to be hogging it for themselves. But at least over here I can find them with my uh, wider time availability. Among the non-edible places, we are also getting that huge Uniqlo on Princess Street. Now, you know, obviously that now is an international chain. But one thing I will say is that Uniqlo is very good at selling affordable kind of functional clothing, especially clothing that's either very good for the summer, you know, it has like UV protection and is very sort of sweat wicking. And in winter they have so many great like sort of thermal layers. So I think that in a place like Edinburgh where you, it might be quite challenging to pack for your Scottish trip, like it, it truly, sometimes you just don't know what to expect. I truly think that having a Uniqlo 
in Edinburgh is going to be a game changer. I think that's going to be really helpful to all of us, you know, be it ones who live here, but especially the ones who are visiting. And also on Leithwalk, I believe that there's a new camera shop opening. Instead of the Costa, that was kind of towards the top of Leithwalk, we are now getting a Wex. Um, I'm not quite sure if Wex is Scottish, but they've had uh, a big sort of showroom down in Leith in one of the warehouses for the longest time. And that I think is not the most accessible place. And again, I think that if you're traveling and you're a photographer, it happens so often. Like one of your cables stops working or like you just quickly need like a good SD card or something. And these days we don't really have many like electronic stores where you could just pop in and get something. So having like a physical camera shop relatively close to the city center might become very handy to many of you. And also like uh, not to make it an afterthought, but now that I've said so many things about Edinburgh, let me just say that Glasgow is getting two new venues by Six by Nico, but neither of them is like the regular Six by Nico tasting restaurant experience. I believe one of them is supposed to be like a play on a chippy and the other one is supposed to be a cocktail bar. So I'm quite curious about that because I do believe Six by Nico is originally from Glasgow. So that's where they are kind of um, focusing their creative efforts. Maybe if those are successful, they will bring them to Edinburgh as well. <sighs> and to slowly finish this video, um, I also wanted to talk about places that have closed in 2023. So places that you might have visited in your previous visits to Scotland and um, you will likely be sad to hear that they're not around anymore. A lot of these are places that I've covered in my videos. A lot of them are places that have been so well beloved you know, they had such a great sort of following and they were always full. And I guess that I can only blame this on just how expensive things are right now. You know, the, the supply chain and the energy costs and the rent. So just recently, Le Petit Café, the great crepe place on Morrison Street, Morrison Road, Morrison Street, uh, has closed down. They have for many years been one of like the most popular best rated cafes in edinburgh um it it has been such a sweet little place um the owners were really like very much into this project and they were almost always around and they remembered your face it was just a really nice like local place to grab a lunch or breakfast and i am gonna miss them dearly chums that was such a great like Scottish bakery down in Leith. It was, the whole look was, their branding was like amazing. But I think that uh, their sort of rental agreement ran out and uh, they might find a new place maybe down the line and they haven't found any yet, not that I know of, but I, I really want them to come back. It was so cool. And again, a place that I would recommend to so many people. Blue Bear Cafe down kind of in like Cannon Mills. That was more of a, like a local favorite. I think that not many of you probably visited, but I have many friends who really liked it. That's not gonna be a brand of Luxford Burgers, who I've heard are very good. So, you know, at least there's that. At least it's being replaced by another sort of a local legend. Gordon Ramsay's Street Pizza, which in my opinion opened in like the weirdest location. And um, I didn't care for it. So, you know, that's fine. Bandits down in Leith, I think similarly have opened around uh, sort of lockdown times um, when the rent was really affordable down there. Now that the trams are down there, I think that people are trying to sell uh, those spaces for much more money, but Bandits have now moved into Edinburgh street food, so we haven't lost them completely. Uh, nice Times Bakery, a place where we got our wedding cake from, are closing their sort of like cafe also on more Street, um, very much like in our neck of the woods. So absolutely heartbreaking. This was a place that made one of my favorite cups of coffee in the whole city. Um, they will still be baking for other cafes. So um, for example, Love Crumbs uh, take their cakes from them. So if you liked the bakes from uh, Nice Times Bakery, you will still be able to get that from multiple places. They will still do like a wholesale operation. Kilted Donuts, the Stockbridge branch has closed down, which is kind of a bummer, but I have seen them kind of asking around on their socials if uh, people want them to come back. Um, I think that they are actually more looking at coming back down to Leith. Again, now the trams are going down, so maybe it would be a more viable place for them to reopen. 
uh, otherwise they still have their branch on grass market. Stack and still, uh, also, if you remember, mentioned them in one of my videos that was like a, like a scotch pancake place. Uh, it was really fun, I really liked it. It was a really nice place to grab lunch or brunch. Um, they have not closed down completely. They used to be kind of across the street um, from Primark on Rose Street, but they have now moved to one of like the other side streets um, in Newtown. So they are still around. I am guessing the venue is a bit smaller because this one was very large. Again, it always seemed really busy, so I'm surprised that they closed down, but I'm sure it has been a very uh, savvy economical move to just find a different location. It's still kind of vaguely in the same area, so I imagine that works. The Loch Fine restaurant down kind of in like New Haven, that was very popular. Like people would say that's like the best fish and chips in town. I have not actually managed to try it, which, you know, I am, very i'm very embarrassed by that i really should have and now i will never get to so once again you know if someone is recommending you something don't just think to yourself i'm just gonna do it on my next visit just try to try to pack as many things into one visit as possible because places here just close so fast Okay, don't forget that on this channel, I continuously make videos about newly opened places in Edinburgh. Usually this is very food centric, but I would say that's only because that's the sort of establishment that we get the most of when it comes to like newly opened places here in Edinburgh and around. Um, I think that with those videos, it makes sense for me to focus on Edinburgh, but obviously when these new museums open up around Scotland, I'm gonna go there and document it for you and make it even easier for you to decide if that's somewhere that you'd like to visit while you know, you're know you on your Scottish vacation. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to newly opened places in Edinburgh, especially food, but also shops and other venues and attractions, I tend to make one video every two or three months about those. I go there, I try it all, I see it all, my own taste buds and eye bulbs. Eyeballs, that's the word in English. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget that I now have a Patreon. So if you like videos like this, if you appreciate the effort that goes into them, you can always send me a little tip through Patreon. You can also become one of the sort of higher tier patrons and get access to extra videos because at this point I will soon have three new videos there and there should be at least one every month coming towards that tier. So for about six dollars a month you can get a free video. If you don't have enough of my face you can also visit me on Instagram under kakibot for my illustrations and kakiblog for my photos of Edinburgh and Scotland and beyond. It's kind of it's more travel uh, focused. Okay, that is truly it for me. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you found it useful and I shall see you soon.